you guys in the way. You have a better green <laughs> Okay, hi everyone. If you have a wintry uh, scene like this where there's loads of snow and you take your camera out, uh, first of all you want to make sure that you've got your lens hood and everything on so that you're not getting any water on the front of your lens. But with snow it's not too much of a worry. You can usually just cover up your camera and lens like this. But if you have your camera on an auto setting, maybe uh, speed, aperture or uh, or program mode or auto, uh, what will happen is the photos will come out really, really dark. And that is because whenever your camera is looking at this whole scene, its histogram is seeing, whoa, it's way too bright because there's too much white, and it will be bringing the exposure down the way. Or what, what it'll be doing, it'll be having a really high shutter speed or a really small aperture uh, to try and make sure it's all kind of in the grey area. So if I take a photo just now, There's going to f8 and 250th of a second. What you need to do is do some exposure compensation, and that's some positive. When it's bright, you want positive exposure compensation. So I'm going to put this up by plus two. So two exposure compensations up the way. And if we take the shot again, that's looking much more like the kind of brightness and colour and everything we're wanting from the image rather than what it was before. So that's, that's a little tip. If you're shooting in bright conditions, you want the exposure compensation to be positive. If you're shooting in a dark place and you want it to kind of be correct, you give it a negative compensation. So if we're also doing it with a portrait, so we're going to take a picture of Kim here and we're going to use flash, we're going to have two positive two compensation on the camera exposure, but we'll need negative two, or maybe somewhere around about that, uh, exposure compensation on the flash. So it's separate ideas that you've got on the flash and actually on the sensor. So here we'll take a shot of Kim out in the snow just now. <laughs> That's what it looks like with a snowball in his face. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Here is a closer look at the photos here. Uh, as you can see, that's the two ones where you want to overexpose or put a positive exposure compensation so that the white snow looks white instead of kind of grey and dirty. Uh, if you have it at its normal, it'll kind of look like it's more like ash rather than snow. You want to brighten up so the white is properly white, uh, and it can take up to two stops. Uh, not necessarily, three might be too much. In fact, I'll show you what the effect of having a, a plus three exposure compensation, it would look something like that. So that really is kind of everything's a bit blown out. But you can use that to a creative effect. Okay, so now if we look at shots of Kim that we did with Flash. Now, here is if we didn't do any exposure compensation on the flash. So what you've got to remember is there's two different things. There's a compensation on your camera sensor, which is what it will be seeing, and it will be automatically changing the TTL settings on the flash. So if you put positive two compensation, the flash itself will also be positive two flash power, so be twice as bright. Or effectively that's four times as bright if it's two EVs. Um, and as you can see here, this is the portrait I took of Kim, and it's blown Kim's face out totally. So Kim is just way too bright. If we were to bring that down two stops in RAW, there that's kind of the exposure that you'd want it to be. And that kind of looks okay there, but again, the snow behind her is all looking kind of grey. So what you've got to do is you've got to do a positive exposure for the image and then a negative setting for the flash. And I know some of you may find this very confusing and a bit complicated, but this is what it turns out like. So the shot before, let's just uh, put that back to how it was, reset, and then this is these are the two shots of how it came out once you use flash. You can see the flash is in her eye, right in there. So it's properly going off and it's giving her a nice shadow down there because effectively at this time of day there is no shadow whatsoever. It's, uh, it's totally cloudy. As you can see, it's snowing. And that gives her a nice kind of healthy kind of glow to her face. This is probably my favourite shot here. So if we look at the uh, details of the library and we go in, we can see if you head down here, okay, the f3.3, uh, 1 250th of a second, so that is hopefully uh, underexposing the background. And as you can see, all this kind of area means most of it's in the actual shot, but it's still pretty bright, so that'll be all the sky totally overexposed. 
And in Lightroom, it doesn't tell you the exposure compensation I put into the flash, uh, so that's not really giving us too much detail here. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the way that that has come out. The good thing that I took the photo in RAW is that I have total control over the white balance here. Uh, just now, I really can't complain. I think the white balance is quite nice. We can make it look colder by bringing the white balance down a little bit, and that might be quite cool if you really want it to look a really cold, wintry shot. Uh, with that, let's see what it would be like if we enhance the blacks and maybe brought the exposure up a little bit more. It could be a really cool, kind of maybe like a bit more poppy kind of idea. And then if we bring the vibrance up, uh, maybe work more just kind of around the eyes, giving a really strong eyes, that would look quite good. Or you could bring the temperature up a little bit so it almost looks warm, but that's not really working in this place. Uh, being that it was daytime, that the correct white balance should be around about 5,000 there. That looks a bit too warm, so I'm definitely thinking a little bit cooler, maybe 4,500 is about right. So that, that's cool that you've got that exact kind of control when you shoot in RAW. But as you can see, the background is totally blown out, which is good. As we, if we click on the highlight button here, which makes everything red, and we click on the darks, that makes all the... Everything that's totally blown out black is shown up in blue. If we do that, you can see that all of her dress is blue, or dress, uh, jacket's blue. And if we totally overexpose, then that's all red, which is what we don't want to do. So if we bring it down to kind of where it was, the bits which I want to be overexposed, the snow and the sky, well, the sky, we can't really do anything with it at all because it was uh, just a totally grey overcast sky. We could bring it down, but it just makes it grey rather than showing any definition in the sky. Here's another shot done with uh, the different camera again. That was what it came out uh, when it's shooting in auto and it looks okay, but it just looks a bit dull. It looks a bit grey. Putting the exposure up a little bit and then now you've got it so it's kind of the more accurate kind of colour that you want it. So it looks like a bright snowy day. Now, here's another thing which is uh, quite important to notice is that whenever you take a camera outside in the snow, that's fine. Whenever you go inside a restaurant, here is in a coffee shop, suddenly your lens will totally steam up. Well, my filter on the front of my lens did, which has kind of given me this kind of halo effect over Kim, uh, which can be which can be quite cool. But uh, if you're not wanting that, got to be careful that you, whenever you move the, your lens and your camera from a hot to a really cold location, there will inevitably be steaming up on the lens. To get rid of that, all you need to do is leave it in that place for about 10, 15, 15, 20 minutes, and the uh, steam will have gone. You may want to give it a clean, but you don't really necessarily have to, um, unless proper big drops of water have been falling on top of it. Okay, and here's my final shot from the day. And what I want to show you here is this is one kind of looking down the street that we walked up earlier. We've got now a bit of blue sky. Uh, so it's bringing a much more interesting picture. What this shot was like before I edited, this was actually just a JPEG coming straight out of the uh, Canon 550D. That's what it was like beforehand. So all I needed to do was uh, lower the brightness of the blues and also it increased the saturation a little bit of the blues, uh, and a little bit of exposure compensation, and it really has given the image much more punch to it. In fact, I'll show you here. Yeah, so recovery, I've put that up quite a bit. Down there looks fine as well, but bringing it up really brings the sky in a lot more. Uh, exposure compensation is pretty much close to exactly where I wanted it. Light fill, that's just for more around about the road area uh, to make that so it's not quite so dark. Blacks, we're not really wanting any more blacks because it was not the brightest. Contrast, I've put that up quite a bit. Uh, although there's already contrast in the camera, uh, in my settings in camera, I've actually lowered the contrast as much as possible so I can edit it afterwards. And then the main thing is, if you look carefully, is more this area, or if you're using Lightroom 2 or 3, is the saturation and the luminance. Bringing the blue down so it's darker means you get more vibrant sky. If we have it where it was before, see, notice the sky kind of disappears a little bit there. Bring that right down too much there and you get image kind of, your, start, your image is starting to break up there. Um, but bring it down to maybe like a, a quarter below, that usually helps, or a third or a quarter. And saturation, just up a touch. Put it up too high, it looks ridiculous. Too low, it becomes a grey picture. 
So uh, just up, usually again, a quarter is what you can do with the JPEG. If I shoot it in RAW, uh, which I don't really do with my uh, Canon 550D, just because I'm usually doing video with that, uh, then it would be a little bit more kind of variation that you can do on that. But yeah, so hopefully that'll be some tips for you that you may have learned something about if you're shooting in snow, you want to do positive exposure compensation so that the snow looks nice and white instead of grey and looks like ash. Okay, hope that helps. Cheers, speak to you later. Bye-bye.